Ang gabi po sa inyong lahat at uh, ituloy po natin ang ating pong uh, weeping full sa courts of heaven. Ngayong pong gabi, ang ating pag-uusapan ay tungkol sa tinatawag na ecclesiastical courts of heaven. This one credit to Dr. Horn Horner. His teaching is taken from his book entitled Engaging the Courts of Heaven. Maximizing the power of the courts of heaven. What is this ecclesiastical courts of heaven? Napakaganda po na maintindihan ito ng mga pastor because it involves our ecclesia or churches. The ecclesiastical courts within the courts of heaven deal with matters relating to his body upon the earth. So ito po ay patungkol sa kanyang katawan at papaanong po mag uh, mumove, mag-ooperate ang kanyang body here on earth. So kaya ito napakahalaga na maunawan ito ng isang pastor. So there are two types of courts in this ecclesiastical courts of heaven na ating i-discuss. Number one is the court of ecclesia And the other one is the court of matrimony. Okay? Mamay explain po sa inyo kung ano po yung court of matrimony. The court of ecclesia deals with doctrinal dispute, judging sin in the church, establishing calling and purposes, removal of hindrances to advancement of the kingdom of God, dispute among uh, brethren, and... Uh, Obtaining the counsel of God's will. So, ito po yung mga bagay na kinakailangan gawin at mahalaga sa loob ng isang structured na timbahan. Isa sa mga issue na madalas na nagkakagulo at nagkakaroon ng tinatawag na Uh, hurt sa bawat isa ay yung judging doctrinal issue. Okay? So there is an example in the Bible how they how they did it. Okay? Matagpuan natin ito sa Acts 15, 4-5. When they came to Jerusalem, they were welcomed by the church and the apostles and the elders and they declared that all that God had done with them. But some believers who belonged to the party of the Pharisee rose up and said, It is necessary to circumcise them and to order them to keep the law of Moses. Alala nyo, Paul and Barnabas experienced that when they went to the Gentiles, they received the Lord and they experienced miracles. So habang kinikwente nila ito, may mga grupo naman, the party of Pharisees. Okay? So ito yung mga legalistic. And they said they, it is necessary. To circumcise, to circumcise them. So, ibig nila sabihin, they just follow the law kung how, paano tayo uh, nagsasubject sa ating reliyon at paniniwala, dapat gawin din nila ito. That was the suggestion of the party of the Pharisee. A council convened, headed by Apostle James, consisting of the elders of the church, kaya ang tawag na lito, Jerusalem Council, in which the issue was addressed So after hearing testimonies and deliberation by the elders, a consensus was reached. Okay? And what does consensus? That they abstain, the Gentiles should abstain from things polluted by idols, from sexual immorality, from things strangled, and from consuming blood. Okay? So this story is actually a reflection of what needs to happen in the courts of heaven concerning the invasion of false doctrines in his body, in his church, false teachings, and other aberrations of the gospel message. 
anything that hinders that hinders the gospel message dapat po itong pag-usapan pero ang alam lang natin ay pag-usapan lang dito sa natural we forgot to deal these things in the realm of the spirit and bring these things into the court of heaven why because our ability to judge this issue depends upon whether we ourselves are embracing false doctrines or teachings. We don't know kasi sometimes when we judge people about their false teachings or quote-unquote false teaching, baka meron din tayo. So kung meron tayo na pinaniwalaan na ganon, mahirap mag-judge. Okay? You will always, ano, partial. Okay? So we cannot judge that which we are guilt, guilty also we are also guilty of. So kung guilty din tayo, meron din tayong pinaniniwalang false teaching, guilty din tayo pag tayo nag-judge. So to be sure, let's bring it where? Into the court of ecclesia in heaven. We must realize that the popularity of a message does not ensure its validity. I give you one example, yung tinatawag na prosperity gospel. One person who is uh, promoting this before is Benny Hinn. Then lately, he turned around at sabi niya, this doctrine is doctrine from, he from hell. You see? Sabi niya, it's been, it's been, uh, it's a greed. Okay? Another thing, it's uh, about the teaching on quote unquote, the gospel of salvation. So most of us believe that for a long time that the gospel is only salvation bringing people into heaven. And we forgot, ang totoo pala is what? The gospel of the kingdom. Okay? So all of us, one way or another, we embrace something na ano, na something false or not 100% true. Another example. Di ba noon, ang, when we share the gospel, sinasabi natin, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ so that you can go to heaven. But the Bible say, does not say like that. Sabi niya, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And no one can come to the Father. Our destination is not heaven, but what? Father. Magkaiba yung Father tsaka sa heaven. But because at that time, there is no revelation yet, about the fatherhood of God, about the love of the Father, eh, nabubuhay tayo sa ganong klaseng, ano, paradigm. Nakuha niyo po ibig sabihin. So, that's why it's really hard to what? To make judgment. So, to be sure, let's go where? Into the court of heaven. We can go before the court of the ecclesia and have the doctrine or teaching judge in that court. That is the safest thing. Kasi kung tayo-tayo lang ang mag, you know, ang mag-a-assess uh, kung ito'y galing sa Panginoon, we can, we can be partial. Like for example, about this court of heaven, the courts of heaven. If you don't believe, go to the courts of heaven. Tanungin yung langit. Okay? And then confirm it in the scripture. Receive the verdict from the court of scribe and get it dispatched by the angelic forces to bring forth truth in the earth. So kung merong uh, tawag dito, kung kaya di ba naalala mo yung uh, uh, sa Galatians chapter 3, anong sabi ni Paul? Who be with you? Sinong nang kulam sa inyo na bakit nyo pinaniniwalaan itong gospel na ito na hindi galing sa Panginoon? Okay, di ba sabi ni Paul, kung ako man ay magturo ng gospel na hindi katulad ng sinabi ko sa inyo, eh kahit pa anghel ang dumating sa inyo, huwag niyong paniwalaan. Okay? So, there is what we call ano, a, uh, an understanding of what? Of this teaching should be brought where? To the council in heaven. Well, it's good to pag-usapan yan. The council of the ecclesia here on earth. But before we can finalize those things, let's bring it first into the council of heaven and what we call the court of what? Ecclesia. Pangalawa, judging sin. 
Remember this one in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 1 to 5? Sabi ni Paul, it is actually reported that there is a sexual immorality among you and of a kind that is not tolerated even among pagans. For a man has, has his father's wife, or he's a been stepmother, and you are arrogant. Ought you not to rather mourn? Let him who done this be removed from among you. So, this one, actually, this is actually a two rebukes. First, doon sa mga leaders na tinotolerate. And second, doon sa taong may kasalanan na ayaw mag-repent. Okay, that is the background of this. Okay? Anong sabi ni Paul? Although absent in the body, I'm present in the spirit. And if present, I have already pronounced judgment. So you see, Paul released a judgment. I believe Paul went to the court of heaven and asked specifically a specific judgment for this particular case. Okay? So sabi niya, when you assemble in the name of the Lord, and my spirit, my spirit is present, with the power of our, Lord, of our Lord Jesus, you are to deliver this man to Satan for the destruction of the flesh, so that his spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord. So ano yung birdik ng court of heaven? Sabi ni Paul, is deliver this man to Satan. Okay? Dahil nga ayaw niyang ano, magsisi. Ano yung specific na, what does it mean to deliver this person to Satan? Verse 3 said, Paul went to the court to address the situation and received the verdict. And the elders were also to deliver him over to Satan for the destruction of his flesh for the end result of saving his spirit. Kaya maalala mo, pagdating doon sa 2 Corinthians, nag-repent yung mama. At sabi niya, tama na, tanggapin niyo na siya. Okay? So, if the church today would deal with this issue in the spirit first, in the spirit first. Kinakailangan maunawaan natin. We should deal first this kind of issue when judging sin. Kinakailangan you have to bring it first into the court of heaven. Kasi kung hindi nyo po dadali niyan dyan, kaya dito nagkakaroon ng uh, uh, pain. Sometimes yung tao nagkasala instead na ma-restore, hindi siya na restore because there was so there was first harsh judgment upon him in spite of the person is what repentant now let us see the situation this guy is not a repentant one even the church is tolerating so that's a different story kaya mar maraming mga pastor ang nagkaroon ng ganitong karanasan at madalas kinikick out yung pastor and Kadalasan, instead ma-restore yung pastor, hindi. Why? Because they judge the person, hindi muna sila humingi ng judgment saan? Sa court of heaven. We have the right to judge behavior that is clear transgression of God's word. Yan ang maliwanag sa Bible. Okay? Even though sinabi ni Lord, judge not. But there is an exemption. If there is a clear violation of the word, we are what? Uh, encouraged by God to judge. And we have the responsibility to judge it. How? We get the verdict of heaven and execute it. That's why sabi ni Paul, uh, though I'm not there, I am in the Spirit. Ibig sabihin, Paul was able to get a verdict from the Spirit, from the court of heaven. In that, for that specific case, hindi ito yung, ano, hindi ito yung, uh, uh, Basta lang kopyahin natin yung sinabi doon sa 1 Corinthians chapter 5 without considering the, the present situation ng taong i-judge yun na kanyang kasalanan. In verse 11, sabi doon, but now I am writing to you not to associate. So this is the way to turn over him to Satan. Sabi niya, do not associate with anyone who bears the name of brother, bears the name of brother if he is guilty of sexual immorality or greed, or is an idolater, reviler, drunkard, or swindler. Not even to eat with such one. Okay? For what have I, I to do with judging outsider? Is it not those inside the church whom you are to judge? So, inaalaw ni Lord ang i-judge yung sin. But there is a clear thing na ang ating judgment must be based in what the court of heaven has released. 
understand the context of the passage. Because if the person was a Jew who had converted to Christianity, the only family and friends he likely had were, to fa were fellow believers. Okay? Kasi noon, pag yung mga Hudyo naging uh, uh, Kristiyano, matindi ang persecution sa kanyang family. So, if he came from a pagan background, they certainly would not have friends among the Jews because the Jews were forbidden to have relationship with them. So, in other words, their only friends would be fellow believers. So, kung inutos ni Paul na wag i-disfellowship siya, so if their behavior, if by their behavior, they were cut off from the believers, that solitude, mark this, that solitude would also likely drive them to abandon the sinful behavior. So yun yun ang purpose ng disfellowship. Para masave yung tao, para ma-realize niya na mali ang kanyang ginagawa. So kung mali ang kanyang ginagawa, babalik siya. Kaya naalala nyo dun sa, sa Second Corinthians, pinaalalahanan yung church at tanggapin uli yung kanilang pinagdisiplina. Why? This guy repented. Okay? So, naniniwala ako, you, you can judge sin in the congregation, but it must be done in the love of the Father. Kinakailangan, uh, yung magjudge nito, kinakailangan pumunta muna sa court of heaven. Paul knew that isolation of the sinning believer would also protect others within the church from believing that such behavior was acceptable. Kaya yung judgment na sinirilist ni Paul sa Corinthian church is uh, not only for the guy who sinned, but also for the leaders who tolerating it. Nakuha niyo po ang ibig sabihin. At may mga nangyayaring ganyan, like for example, a pastor committed a sin, hindi mo pwedeng kopyahin yung ginawa ni Paul dito. Yung ganitong judgment. Iba-ibang situation. So what you do is you go to the court of heaven and ask the court, how are you going to judge the sin? Example, how, what will you do if the person is repentant? Will you condemn the person? So yan yung malaking tanong. So kung wala sa antin ang love of the Father, most likely, we will condemn the person. So let us learn to present situation for righteous judgment in the courts of heaven. Yun ang ibig kong sabihin. I'm not saying na huwag kayong magdisiplina. I'm not saying na huwag i-judge ang sin sa loob ng simbahan. Of course, the Lord is telling us, even Paul said, sabi niya, you have to judge. Kasi sa labas, ang mag-judge niyan ay ang Panginoon. But in the, in, sa loob ng simbahan, ang dapat mag-judge ay ano? Tayong mga believers. Okay? Pangatlo. Judging dispute among brethren. So madalas, pag may dispute sa loob ng simbahan, kadalasan nakakarating saan? Sa korte sa lupa. Di ba? Sabi ni... Judging dispute among brethren. 1 Corinthians 6, 1-7 When one of you has grievance against another, does he dare go to law before the unrighteous instead of the saints? Or do you not know that the saints will judge the world? And if the world is to be judged by you, are you incompetent to try trivial cases? Tanong ni, ano, ni Paul. And then sinabi pa niya, do you not know that we are to judge angel. So, Paul is correcting the Corinthians about the dispute because there's one brother there na ano, sinampahan ng kaso yung kanyang kapatid sa korte. So, how much more than matters pertaining to this life? So, if you have of such cases, why do you lay them before those who have no standing in the church? I say this to your shame. Oh. So sabi niya, bakit yung dadalhin doon sa korte sa lupa? Saan na sabi ni Paul, may korte sa langit. Doon yung dalhin yung mga dispute among brethren. Kasi nga, sinabi ni, ni Paul, na to the point, pagdating ng panahon, 
in the millennial reign of Christ, you are going to judge the angel. So now, priest pris lang tayo. But time will come, the Lord will promote us to become part of the, of the court. Judge ka na ngayon. Magiging one of the judge ka na. O parang jury. Okay? Can it be that there is no one among you wise enough to settle a dispute between the brothers? But brothers goes to the law against brother? And that before unbelievers? So, tinatanong ni Paul itong mga taga-Corinthians, bakit niyo ginagawa yan? To have lawsuit at all with one another is already a defeat for you. Sabi niya, pag sumampa kayo ng kaso laban sa kapatid niyo, natalo na kayo. Why? Because in the court of heaven, the enemy will start to accuse you of sin already. Kaya nga ang tanong ni Paul, why not rather suffer wrong? Sabi niya, bakit hayaan mo na lang ikaw ay ano, gawa ng mali at patawarin mo na lang? Bakit mo pa dadalhin sa korte, sa lupa? Why not rather be defrauded? Di ba, ma, 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 ano ka, maloko ka ng kapatid mo. total kapatid mo naman yan. Parang ganun yung gusto niyang sabihin. Huwag niyo lang dalhin doon sa korte, sa lupa. Sinasabi niya, meron tayong korte sa langit. Pwede niyong dalhin doon. So many churches have understood the necessity of church discipline and approach it in This is the problem in natural way. So the Lord is bringing us to a dimension wherein we should not approach it in the natural way. We need to approach the court of Ecclesia to have this issue handled in the spirit. You have to handle it in the spirit. And the po, sabi niya, do not repay evil with evil. Why? Kasi sabi ni Lord, Vengeance is mine. Kaya sa korte sa langit, one of the requirements pag lumapit ka sa court para matanggal yung accusation mo, kinakala mo magpatawad. Dahil ano? Pag nagpatawad ka, ang ginagawa mo, binibigyan mo ang Diyos ng legal right na ano? Na siya ang gumanti para sa'yo. Yan ang ibig sabihin ng forgiveness. Kaya kapag hindi ka nagpatawad, I guarantee you, hindi ka niya maidipensahan, hindi ka niya madipensahan ni Lord. Hindi ka niya maipaghiganti. Kasi nga, hindi mo siya binibigyan ng ano, legal right. And the legal right that you are giving to God is your forgiveness to whoever na nakasakit sa iyo. So, and the summary of 1 Corinthians chapter 7, read it. This is the summary. If we learn to deal with things in the realm of heaven, We won't have to deal with them in the realms of the earth. That's the reality. Kasi kung mga dispute lamang na napaka-simple, di ba? Pwede mo lang ano, dalhin doon sa langit. At doon pa lang sa heaven, you can receive what? Judgment. Righteous judgment. And then you can now impose it here on earth. Judging entities outside of the purposes of God. Now, how are we going to judge those entities outside the purposes of God? How do you deal with the institution in the community that call themselves churches, are essentially cults, or serve no other godly purpose on the earth? Oh, anong sasabihin nyo dun sa mga simbahan na kulto? Ang dami niyan sa Pilipinas. Oh. Lalo na dito sa Dabao, yung nagkiklaim na siya daw ang ano, the owner of heaven and earth. So how do you deal with that? So napakaraming mga simbahan dito sa lupa na maraming tao ang naluloko. So how do you deal? How do you release judgment on those entities? If God never ordained their existence, neither should we. Alam natin, it is the devil who ordained those existence the existence of those so-called church na mga kulto. So, kung hindi yan pinayagan ng Diyos, huwag din dapat natin payagan. Kasi ang sabi nila, whatsoever you bind on earth, it, will, it is already bound in heaven. 
So, hinihintay tayo ng ating Panginoon. But how are we going to do it? How do you deal with the institution? When a church in your area begins preaching another gospel, it needs to be judged and shut down in the spirit. Yan ang ibig sabihin yan. That church, quote-unquote, in your area, begins preaching another gospel, not the gospel of the kingdom, it should be shut down in the spirit. Anong gagawin ng eklesia sa community na yan? You should gather together. The eklesia is the house of prayer. You should gather together and then present the case into the court of heaven. And ask the court to send his angel to shut down the church. This can happen through the proper courtroom work in the court of ecclesia. I remember that was in 2017. Nung andito si Robert Mee sa Davao, uh, one of the practicum is to make a submission. The group from Davao City, isang sinabmit nila, actually ang sinabmit nila, si Kibuloy, yung simbahan niya. You know what happened a week later? Ano? Yung kanyang kaso doon sa, ano, sa Hawaii, somebody filed a case of uh, uh, sexual abuse. And then, nahuli na may pera siya. Kaya yung eroplano niya, hindi pinalipad dito sa Pilipinas. That was 2017, September yun nangyari, after our submission here. Kaso lang hindi na napalo up. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, the, uh, baka may ilba pang issue. So, ibig sabihin, the Ecclesia here in Davao has to come together again and do some judicial inquiry about that particular ano, church. The Ecclesia needs to arise and begin to govern by the Spirit. Kasi hindi mo naman kaya yan sa natural. How can you close them? Even the, ano eh, meron tayong freedom of religion eh. Hindi pwedeng, kahit gobyerno, hindi yan pwedeng i-close ng gobyerno. Oh. Naalala ko tuloy si, ano, si Pastor Jun Lucas. Naikwento niya sa akin. One time, kinausap daw niya noon si Digong Mayor pa. Ang sabi niya, oh, Mr. Mayor, do you believe that your friend is truly the son of God? Ang sagot daw sa kanya ni Digon, Oh, come on. He's just a man. You see? So, ang point here is, until that spirit who back up the church is not dealt with, mananatili yan na manluloko, makakapagloko ng maraming tao. So, kaninong trabaho ito? This is the work of the Ecclesia. To go to the court and govern by the Spirit of God. So, we need to serve as gatekeepers of our community to protect it from those who go astray. O like for example, in Manila, every January, di ba, pinapaikot yung, ano, yung uh, black na sarin. So, ano ang dapat gawin? Eh, ang tagal na tayo nagpipray tungkol dyan, nagre-rebuke, nagbabind. Ang isa lang na hindi natin ginagawa is to submit that uh, kind of religion saan? Sa court. Di ba? Hindi pa natin nagagawa. That's the reason why walang gagawin ng Diyos to stop that ano. Ilang milyon ang nagpapatronize dyan sa tinatawag na Black Nazarene na yan. Hanggang dito sa Cagayan de Oro, dinadalin dito sa Mindanao. O. Oh. Dito sa Dabao, mayroong simbahan na yan dito. So, until we deal with it, hindi man yan i-deal ni Lord hanggat di tayo pumupunta sa korte para i-deal yan. Next, obtaining the counsel of His will. His will is very important. Kaya ang sabi ni Paul sa, sabi niya, the desire of God is that every person find and fulfills the will of God for their lives. Mahalaga yon na ma-fulfill ng bawat isa, yung kanyang uh, will. Ephesians 1, 
verses 1 to 14. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, even as He chose us in Him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy, blameless before Him. And then in love, He predestined us for adoption to Himself as sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of His will, to the praise of His glorious grace, with which He has blessed us in the Beloved, in Him we have redemption through His blood and forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of His grace, which He lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight, making known to us the mystery of His will. So, anong ginawa ni Lord? Ibinigay niya, ni-reveal niya sa ating the purpose of His will. When is that? Even before the foundation of the world. Okay? Kaya di ba sabi ni Lord kay Jeremiah, before you were born, I knew you. Then according to His purpose, which is set forth in Christ as plan for the fullness of time, to unite all things in Him, things in heaven and things on earth, in Him we had obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of Him who works all things according to the counsel of His will. Tandaan niyo po yung word na counsel of His will in reference to the book that is in heaven, that is the counsel of His will, nakasulat doon sa book na yan, yung kanyang ano, purpose. So that we, who were the first to hope in Christ, might be to the praise of His glory. In Him, you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believe in Him, were sealed with the promise Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it to the praise of His glory. So we are to live to the praise of His glory. And we need to understand deep within us His plan and purposes for our lives. So anong gagawin natin? Di ba yan yung gusto natin yung mga member ng ating church madiscover nila yung ano, plan and purposes of God. So what, what shall we do? We bring them to the court of Ecclesia. We need the counsel of His will. Okay? So we can access the courts to seek removal of every, every hindering thing, whether it is generational or otherwise. Okay? May mga naghihinder sa atin. So let's go to the court and find the counsel of His will for each member's. Yan yung trabaho natin ng pastor. Kaya sa totoo lang, mabigat itong trabaho sa atin. Okay? Hindi pwede rito yung chamba-chamba lang. Okay? We can request an unveiling of His calling and purposes be established for our lives and the lives of your people. We can gain His strategy for fulfilling His mission. Kaya it's now the time na we have to have our own strategy coming from the courts of heaven. Hindi po pwede yung gaya-gaya system. Hindi pwede yung gaya-gaya na lang tayo na kung ano yung ginagawa ng iba, gagawin din natin. Okay? We have been given an inheritance. And to know that inheritance, you go to the court. We need to get the scroll describing what is contained within that inheritance. Ano ba yung mana na binigay sa iyo? Hindi pwedeng magchamba-chamba lang kayo. Kaya nga, we've been teaching you to go to the court of heaven and identify first ano yung purpose of His will for your life, for the life of the ministry, yung mga tao sa church mo. Ano yung purpose ni Lord? Kaya nga may roadmap tayo. Oh. At yung roadmap, hindi lang ito basta galing lang dun sa isip ng tao. You must go to the court of heaven and get it from the, from the books that is written for your church. The problem is we have not availed ourselves of the courts of heaven to settle the issues hindering our fulfillment of that call. So maraming naghihinder sa call natin. So the only way to find out is where? You go and to appear, you appear in the court of heaven 
and find out ano yung mga accusation ng kaaway na ibinabato sa iyo sa korte. We have not submitted to His counsel and not known His will for our lives. Kaya ang tawag natin dyan, ke sera sera, whatever will be, will be. Next, you also need the release of ministry funds and equipment. Bakit? Hindi ho madali ang mag-ministry. It's very expensive po. Eh magkano na ang renta ng simbahan ngayon ng building? Magkano ang bayad ng kuryente? Magsisweldo ka sa mga minister mo, sa mga leaders mo. Di ba? Sa mga salary ng pastor. So it's not easy. So that's the reason why He, he is encouraging us. It is not only apply, can, uh, can this be applied to individuals, but also to ministry. So, you need equipments. You need upuan. O, oh, kung kailangan mo mag-outreach, may calling sa inyo si Lord na mag-outreach. So, hindi naman po pwedeng thank you and God bless you dyan. Di ba? So, for the release of ministry funds and equipment, you go to the court. Funds and equipment are necessary for the fulfillment of the purposes of God. Sa langit, di mo na kailangan yan. But if you're here on earth, kailangan mo yung equipment na yan. O tulad nito, o, to make this uh, Zoom equipping, you need some equipments. O ito, microphone. You need to buy some good equipment para medyo maganda ang boses mo. Okay? You need a camera para ano, medyo maganda naman yung itsura mo. Di ba? You pay for the Zoom application. May, may subscription yan. So you need what? Fund for the ministry. Next, release of ministry funds and equipment. We can petition the release of those funds and equipment necessary for this particular time and phase of your ministry within the courts of Ecclesia. So you go to the courts of Ecclesia. Father, I'm presenting to you Ganito po, dahil sinabi nyo sa amin na ganito, mag-outreach kami, ito po yung mga equipment na kailangan namin, ito po yung resources na kailangan namin. You go there. Next, ito ang pinakamahirap, removal of wrong personnel. Sometimes, we put a wrong person in the ministry. Kaya hindi mo matanggal ang daming kamag-anak sa simbahan. So kapag tinanggal mo, Without apparent reason, hindi mo naman pwedeng sabihin, hindi, hindi gifted. Or kung gifted man, he is the wrong person in the ministry. Hindi mo matanggal kasi yung mga member mo, maraming kamag-anak itong tao na ito sa, sa church. So pag tinanggal mo, ano mangyayari? Baka maglipatan, mabawasan ka ng tighter sa loob ng simbahan. So many ministry and churches have endured a problematic leaders whose sole purpose seemed to be to bring strife and trouble. Diba? Alam ko meron kayong ganyan sa loob ng simbahan. At hirap na hirap ang inyong damdamin, hindi nyo matanggal. Hmm. So what you will do? Instead of adding to the ministry, this guy, they are taking away from the ministry by siphoning energy. He's taking the energy, the resources, the time, and the impact of the ministry if you have a wrong personnel in your local church. If you have that kind of person, what you do? Hindi ba natural? Dinidisiplina, kinakausap. Pero ano nangyayari? Nagpo-produce ng ano? Ng hurt, bitterness, miscommunication, nag-aaway-away. Why? Because we did not deal it in the court of heaven. Their authority to be at the ministry can be revoked by someone in the capacity to do so. But deal with it in the spirit first by assessing, accessing the courts of heaven. Yes, pwede siyang tanggalin ni pastor. But the problem is, meron itong consequence nga. Kung lalo na kung marami itong ano, marami itong uh, kamag-anak doon sa loob ng simbahan, may mga kaibigan. O, oh, paano yon? 
Kaya kuminsan, yung pastor, he sent his tithe, hindi niya magawa. Oh. Kung gawin man niya, talaga magkabuhol-buhol ang simbahan. Okay? Relationship will be broken. But the, the authority, the pastor, the first thing that he can do is what? Deal with it in the spirit first. Maari, yung wrong personnel is because there is a character flows. Eh, yung character flows, pwede namang makorek yan eh. So you bring it in the spirit. But if he is the wrong person in the ministry, you can also bring that in the spirit. And that person will be, you know, hin tandaan nyo, hindi na uubusan ang, ano, ang korte ng langit ng solusyon. Tandaan nyo po. So do not ever think na nauubusan ang langit ng solusyon sa mga problema sa loob ng eklesiya. Wrong position is still destinies. Kaya kung ano ba ang worship leader mo, he is the wrong person in the worship team. He is stealing destiny of a person na dapat na andun. Hindi mo matanggal dahil ano? Merong mga consequences na ayaw mo mangyari. Okay? So, para maiwasan yan, you deal that in the spirit first by accessing the courts of heaven. Ano yan? Obtaining the right personnel. Just as we don't need a certain person in our ministry, by the same principle, we do need the right ones. Kaya, pwede ka rin magpunta sa korte sa langit at humingi ka you ask God to open the books of your ministry. Because the books of your ministry actually contains information. Who, when, where, what, why. Everything is there in the book. Even the right person to be involved in your ministry, you can call for. Oh. Kaya, hindi na problema dito yung mga palipat-lipat ng miyembro. Oh. Kaya pag nagpaalam yan, isa lang ibig sabihin, hindi yan miyembro mo, hindi yan para sa inyo. So bitawan nyo na. And what you do? Obtain the right personnel. Court, you go to the court. Lord, open the books of the ministry. Tell me who are the person that should be involved in this ministry. Start calling this in the spirit. Magugulat ka na lang. Mga darating yung mga tao na yan. Finding the right personnel can start with reading your scroll. Start reading what is written in the books. Read it. You can find those people. Okay? He can reveal it to you. Believe it, brethren. Simply approach the court of Ecclesia and request access to the scroll of your ministry. Sabi niyo, Lord, I'm here in the court of Ecclesia. I want to access the scroll, the books of my ministry. Lord, Kailangan ko po ng mga right personnel para sa, sa ministry na ito. Can you show me sino po yung mga tao na yon? Okay? And then, even now, Lord, I'm calling this person. He might give you the first name. Oh, you call the name of these people right now. Call it. Oh, magulat ka. Darating yan doon sa ano mo. Sa simbahan mo na lang. Acts 17.26 Obtaining the right property for your ministry. Kailangan mo rin yung property. Acts 17.26 And he made from one man every nation of mankind to lead on all the face of the earth, having determined allot, allot, allotted periods and the boundaries for dwelling place. So si Lord, every nation, binigyan niya ng boundary. Okay? Boundaries of their dwelling. And I believe it can be applied also to your ministry. Si Lord may prepare na boundaries for you or property para sa inyo. So, kung kayo nagre-renta hanggang ngayon, you can go to the court and ask God for the boundaries of your dwelling place. Father, which boundaries, which area you are giving us? Okay? You simply need to step into the courts. And request instructions to where your property is.
ano daw? You step into the court of Ecclesia, request instruction as to where your property is. Lord, nasaan po ba ang property ng ministry na ito? Sasabihin sa iyo ng Panginoon yan. Get the pertinent scroll from the court of scribe. Lord, can I see the, the books that belongs to this church? And then, once you find out the location, you will want to find out the history of the property. So, dapat malaman nyo kung yung history ng property. Baka meron yung tinatawag na uh, false title of the enemy. Baka may bloodshed dyan. O, di ba? O, baka naman, I'll give you one story. We were in uh, Sarangani one time. We did the training nung tinatawag na Gates, Altars, and Covenant. After the training, sabi nung pastor, sabi niya, pastor, can you pray for our property? Kasi, every time na after the Sunday service, lagi akong parang Apong hapo, pagod na pagod. At yung wife niya may sakit. Nangyari lang yun nung sila'y lumipat dun sa property. Tapos may kasama akong si Ear. Sabi ko sa kanya, what can you see on the property? Sagot niya sa akin, Pastor, dito sa gate ng kanilang ano, ng kanilang itong property nila, itong gate na ito, meron ito dati na puntod or libi, ano, na parang nitso. May inilibing dito. Biglang namula yung ano, pastor. Sabi niya, paano niyo nalaman? Sabi nung sir, nakita ko eh. Meron dyan, no? Oh. Hanggang ngayon, kahit tinanggal niyo na, the spirit of death is still there. Ay, kaya pala ganyan. So, what we did, we closed the gates, we removed the spirit of death, we pour an oil, and we do a communion on the land, we redeem the land. And then after a week, sabi ng pastor, okay na daw. Wala na yung kanyang uh, pagiging parang hapo-hapo, gumalig na yung asawa niya. So, it's important, when you, once you find out the property, you need also to find out the history of the property kasi baka may false title ng enemy yan. So, dapat, maano mo, matawag dyan, ma, madil mo muna in the spirit realm yung mga false title doon sa property. Access the court of titles and deed and deal with any issues. Yan yung ibig ko sabihin. Deal with any issue about the property. Okay? Then access the court of angels for dispatch in obtaining the property. Yan. So kinakailangan, you go to court of angels, sabihin nyo, Lord, kailangan namin ng ano, uh, angels, we already have decision from the court of heaven na this piece of property belong to us. Can we ask the court, the angels to be dispatched to this property that this property will be released and given to us? Yan. You also need to petition for the necessary funds to buy the property while in the court of Ecclesia. Kaya nakalang, pag nag-present ho kayo niyan, pag sinabi ni Lord, o may lupa kayo, o Lord, ano ba yan? Kailangan namin ng pondo para pambayad sa, sa lupa. I give you a story nung kami ay nag-start ng school noong 1998. Uh, one of our problem is a property, piece of land. Kasi nga, nag-ano lang kami, nag-re-rent lang kami sa isang building. Second to fourth floor. Yung nire-rent namin, ginawa namin simbahan, ter- bahay namin, at the same time school. Now, so what we did, we called the church, we shared the vision, kailangan natin ng property. Na sabi ko, mag-pledge tayo para pambili ng lupa. True enough, after a year, alam niyo kung magkano na raise up namin na pondo for that property? 3,500 pesos. Ulang pang pambili ng isang metro kwadradong uh, tawag dyan, lupa. So, We did not worry. We believe that God called us to put up that school. So one day, hindi pa namin alam itong Court of Ecclesia. Ang alam lang namin, mag-pray kami, Lord, we believe you by faith na bibigyan mo ngayon ng lupa. One day, yung isa sa aming leader, sabi niya, Pastor, yung auntie ko, ibinibenta yung lupa dito sa area natin. Uh, 
I asked her kung pwede niyang i-donate na lang sa church yung uh, 3,400 square meters kasi 4.34 hectares yung lupa. Yung 4 hectares na lang ang ibenta, yung 3,400 square meters, i-donate na lang sa simbahan. Alam niyo pumayag? Tapos sabi niya, Pastor, kailangan ko lang po 3,500 para pambayad sa surveyor. You see, can you imagine the whole year nag nag-ipon kami Kasi ang kailangan lang pala namin is what? 3,500 pesos. And then after a week, I'd receive the title of the land. Hindi deed of donation ha, deed of sale. You see? So, di pa namin alam nun ang korte ng langit. How much more ngayon? Pag naintindihan nyo ito, you can petition the court. At ang sabi ni Lord, sabi niya, will he not give justice? to his children, to his elect, who cry out day and night. Diba? Is judging doctrinal issues. Okay? So, ito yung pinag-usapan natin. Judging doctrinal issues. Judging sin. Judging dispute among brethren. Judging entities outside the purposes of God. Obtaining His counsel. The release of ministry funds and equipment, removal of wrong personnel, these are real problem in the ministry, obtaining the right personnel, that's a real problem also, ang hirap makakuha, kaya sometimes maraming pastor natitip na lang, iprosilite na lang yung mga magagaling na leader sa kabilang simbahan. Okay? Obtaining the right property for your ministry. Okay? So that is what we call the court of Ecclesia. These are some of the things that you can bring to the court of Ecclesia in relation to your ministry. Now, the second court that you will need to do to go through is the court of matrimony. Ano ba itong court of matrimony? The court of matrimony deals with the matters relating to marriage, divorce, restoration of marriage, the reaffirmation of marriage, etc. Because this is really a common problem in the church. Diba? Oh, we have a uh, problem in our church. We have a leader na na born again siya, na, pero hiwalay na siya sa asawa niya, meron na siyang bagong, uh, ng ibang, asa, ibang asawa, may mga anak na siya. So, anong tan ang tanong? Hindi mo nang pwedeng kasalin. Kasi kasal pa siya eh. Diba? Legally. Oh. Pangalawa, hindi mo naman pwedeng sabihin na, oh, as anak ko repentance, ul, balik ka na uli doon sa dati mong asawa, ay may pamilya, may mga anak na. So what you will do? Oh, di ba? So how to deal with those kind of issues? Oh. Eh dito sa Pilipinas, wala pang divorce. Meron lang annulment. Pero maraming mga tao, nag a sa sarili lang nila. hindi naman sila pumupunta sa korte para maging legal yung kanilang ano, annulment. Kasi nga, very expensive ang pumunta sa korte, magbayad ng abogado para sa annulment of marriage. Kaya yung iba, pumupunta lang na kay Tulpo. Doon na lang sila nag, ano, nagpapa-arbiter kay ano, Rapi Tulpo. So marriages, many marriages have been solemnized for all the wrong reasons. Some of the marriages, some to legitimize a couple's sexual activity. Some, others to save face in the event of unwanted pregnancy. Others to meet social status needs. Kasi yung iba, uh, nakakaramdam ng left behind sila, rejection, pag di pa sila, single pa rin sila. So they want a change of status. Kailangan nila mag -asawa. Some to meet the cultural expectation through arranged marriages. Because may mga kultura kasi sa ibang bansa, not here in the Philippines, pero may mga ano pa rin dito, mga area pa rin, may mga clan, family, na pinapractice pa rin nila yung arranged marriages. Okay? So, this issue of marriages, ano nangyayari? Pag nagka-problema yung member mo, si pastor ang may problema. ba? Diba? Oh. 
nasa kanya yung ano, burden. So, paano natin ito gagawin? Now, there is a court in heaven. They call it the court of matrimony. So, the first one is, we call it reaffirmation of marriage covenant. Kasi po, an ungodly covenant entered into by parents through a prearranged marriage to a particular mate who may not have been in the plan of God. Like for example, yung magulang nag-decide, ipakasal yung anak niya sa, ta sa uh, taong hindi man niya gusto. Kadalasan, yung mga prearranged marriages, that's not part of the plan of God. Di ba? So if they're not part of the plan of God, so ano nangyayari doon sa kanilang ano? Marriage covenant. Di ba? Laging merong ano, problema. Okay? Because that is ungodly covenants. The couple may be fulfilled the parents' desire na nasunod yung gusto nila na kung sino mapapangasawa nila. But not the desire of the Heavenly Father by going through with that marriage. Okay? So hindi sila yung nakasulat doon sa book na dapat mag-asawa. Okay? So, anong gagawin mo? Eh, may anak na. Hindi mo naman pwedeng paghiwalayin yun. Now, the thing you can do now is to bring it in the court of matrimony. They need a release from the ungodly covenants because the parents made an ungodly covenants that placed them in this situation. Since God hates divorce, ano ang gagawin? Divine adjustment can be made on their behalf. So, you bring the couple into the court of matrimony in heaven. They can fall in love one with another, live in harmony, and experience a fulfilling marriage. Kasi whether you like it or not, hindi man, man sila magkakainlaban sa isa't isa because pinilit lang sila eh. Diba? And they will just endure injuring na lang yung mangyayari sa kanila. Kasi may mga anak na. Pag ganun ang sitwasyon ng marriage ng mag-asawa, may solusyon. You bring them in the court of matrimony and you ask God, let there be a divine adjustment of the covenant that they made. Remove the ungodly covenant. Ang tawag dyan natin ay go before this court recognizing the ungodly covenant, repent of any ill will toward your spouse or the parents or any other parties. Most likely, yung kinasal may sama ng loob yan sa magulang. Lalong-lalo na kung halimbawa yung lalaki ay may ibang girlfriend at yung babae naman may, ila, may, may ibang boyfriend. So hindi sila natuloy. Napilitan silang magpakasal. Okay? So, If you want the reaffirmation of marriage covenant, you bring it into the court of matrimony. Petition for a reaffirmation of the covenant in the sight of God. Lord, we are asking you to reaffirm the marriage of this couple, Juan and uh, Maria. Lord, that they were uh, uh, pre-arranged marriage and we are asking for forgiveness. Lord, and we are asking for the removal of the ungodly covenant that the parents enter with and Lord replace it with a godly covenant. Okay? So, yan po ang una. Pangalawa, restoration of marriage covenant. Paano yan? Halimbawa, You deal in this court any marriage covenant affected by infidelity. So, maraming mga marriages, because of the infidelity, sin of fornication or adultery, ay nasisira yung marriage covenant. So, there is a what? A uh, solution. You go to the court of matrimony and ask for what? Restoration of marriage covenant because the breaches in the covenant need the healing touch of God. Kaya kahit nag-repent na yung lalaki o yung babae, still, the trust is not there. Naputol na yung trust kaya kinakailangan ano, mahil yung kanilang ano, pain. 
na cause nung ano, breaches, na cause nung sin of infidelity. So the verdicts of hell against the couple need to be overturned and replaced by righteous verdicts. So nagkaroon ng ano, uh, tawag doon, uh, yung judgment of hell. False judgment, unrighteous judgment coming from the courts of hell or gates of hell against the couple. So you go to the court of matrimony and ask God to overturn and replace it by a righteous verdict. So the restoration requires confession of the deeds of the infidelity of the spouse. Okay? So there is ano. Uh, Uh, tawag doon? Confession. The offender must repent to God and to the affected spouse. And the blood of Jesus must be applied to the sin. Then you confess your trespasses to one to another and pray for one another that you may be healed. And the effective fervent of prayer of a righteous man avails much. And the reason for the confession to another person is that in the arena of sexual sin, the disclosure to another human being is required for full freedom. So, importante, meron kang ano, masabihan ito. Okay? So, that's uh, the rule. Okay? Next is, what is this annulment of marriage? Okay? Within the religious world, much condemnation has been heaped upon those who have suffered with divorce. Kaya, ang daming judgment ang na-release doon sa mga lalaki at mga babae na naging biktima ng divorce. Maaring sila'y biktima lang. Maaring ayaw din nila mag-divorce. But the problem is, kapag yung partner nila ay ayaw na sa kanila, wala man silang magagawa. Okay? So, they often quoted the scripture over these people that experience divorce or annulment. Sabi niya, what God has joined together, let no man put asunder. Okay? Pero ito, ang pan, ito rin, isa kong paniniwala. Tingnan niyo kung tama. However, God can put asunder a marriage that is unworkable for whatever reason He determines. Yes, no man can put asunder. But God can put asunder a marriage that is unworkable. Pwede siyang, siyang gumawa ng paraan. ba? Diba? So marami siyang paraan. So, but man cannot put it asunder. Hindi niya pwedeng uh, hiwala yun. Okay? Paghiwalayin ng tao. Pero ang Diyos, pwede niyang gawing paghiwalayin. Okay? Ang Diyos yun. Okay? So, he hates divorce. Yet, He dearly loves the divorced person. Mahal niya yung ano, divorced person. So in many cases, they feel as their life has been put on hold and they cannot move forward. Ito yung experience ng mga taong hiwalay, iniwanan, okay, whether it's legally or not. So if a person is annulled or divorced, legally or not, they feel that feeling of parang tumigil ang buhay nila. Pag dumating yung time na sila ay nag-decide na mag-asawa muli, the problem is, bumabalik yung ano. May soul tie siya dun sa unang asawa niya. So ang lagi pa rin niya hinahanap, yung kanyang asawa. So kaya yung marriage niya ngayon, hindi nag-work. It's because of that. So they need freedom from these things. And the solution within the courts is a, de a decree of nullity. So what you will do, you go to the court of heaven, and nullify the marriage na unang marriage nyo. Kaya yun ang ibig ko sabihin ng annulment of marriage. God will annul the marriage that you have before. Nakuha nyo yung ibig sabihin? The divorced person needs to be free and be released so they can go on with their life and joy and not sorrow. So another example, kung yung mga asawa nila ay namatay, isa ding bagay na ano yun eh, na issue 
kasi may pain na naiwan sa kanya. So, pag nag-asawa siya uli, kinakailangan, ano, marilis siya doon sa kanyang, ano, even though sinabi ni Lord na pag namatay na yung asawa, malaya ka na. But if your heart is still not free, that's a problem. The cloak of heaviness will be lifted and they will be able to breath again. Kasi, when a person experiences divorce or annulment or namatay yung asawa niya, the cloak of heaviness is upon him or upon her. And the only way na ma-remove yan, bring that person into the court of matrimony. The second court of the ecclesiastical court of heaven is the court of matrimony. We have the pieces mostly na dinadala dito sa court of matrimony is the reaffirmation of marriage covenant. This is when a uh, opal that's been married ay hindi according doon sa purpose ni Lord because most of these marriages are what? Ay kailang uh, biglang anak, nabuntisan, o kaya ay rearranged marriages. If that is the case, you can see there is no joy in their married life at merong nangyayaring infidelity sa buhay ng mag-asawang ito. So for that to be resolved, you need to go to the court of matrimony and you ask for the reaffirmation of marriage covenant. Second is the restoration of marriage covenant when this covenant is what? Marriage covenant is uh, cause ng fidelity of either part of the spouse, spouses. So, kinakailangan na ano, ma-restore yung marriage covenant. Pangatlo, annulment of marriage covenant it applies doon sa mga na-divorce o nag-separate na kung sila ay mag-aasawang muli o kahit hindi sila mag-aasawang muli. They need their marriages in the past need to be annulled in the court of matrimony. Okay? So the third court that we're going to discuss tonight is the criminal court. Not everything we deal in the court of heaven is pleasant. So ito ang medyo controversial. Some of you will not agree with what I'm going to say. But anyway, I'm going to say it. So it's up to you whether you're going to accept it. If not, throw it away. Okay? Sometimes we need to deal with the extreme evil by accessing the criminal court. If you're going to look at this nation, the Philippines, there's so much evil. Okay, give you one example. Why the government sponsor this anti-terrorism bill? Ang kanilang reason is because tumataas na yung uh, tawag dito, yung criminality na ginagawa nito mga terorista. Example, ang NPA. So, hirap ngayon ng gobyerno to topple this NPA and other uh, criminal groups na sa likod nito, meron silang mga ipinaglalaban politically. Okay? Some of these are valid injustices. But the problem is, they become what instruments of the devil destroying our nations. A common petition within this court is the request for a restraining order against a person or entities that seek to harm an individual or group. Who are these people? These are what? The drug lords, the gambling lords. And most of these people protecting these criminals are in the Congress wearing the barong. And some of them are governors, some of them are mayors, and some of them in the high places in the government position. Some of them are in the police force. Nakuhan niyo po? Now, as an ecclesia, here on earth, we are called to rule here on earth. So, ano ang gagawin natin? So, God is telling us about this criminal court that we can file a petition against this, ano, this uh, people who are what? 
seek to harm this nation. Like for example, yung corruption na lang. They are what? Depriving the poor. Diba? At sino yung mga ito? They connive with the private companies. Di ba yung mga kontrata? O sino yung, sino yung mga kriminal? These are the people. Akala natin yung kriminal ay yung mga nasa kal- sa mga uh, sa street na gumagawa ng mga petty crimes. Hindi po lang yun. And the real criminals are the one who are what? Doing injustices over this nation. Okay? You may request a permanent restraining order or they call it injunction or a temporary restraining order depending upon the situation in order to obtain the relief desired. Oh, tinan nyo na lang po. Bakit napakamahal ng tubig sa Manila? Eh, pinagsamantalahan ng mga tao sa gobyerno in partnership with private companies, with the oligarchs. Bakit ang mahal-mahal ng kuryente sa Pilipinas, pinakamahal sa Asia? Because during the time of Ramos, they took advantage of our what? Need of electricity. Kasi nung naupo si Cory, hindi nila pinaandar ang, ano, ang uh, bataan nuclear plant. They make a uh, tawag dito, campaign against it. Then later on, ngayon na found out nila, hindi naman pala tinatawag na uh, hindi pala dangerous yung nuclear power plant. It becomes what? A propaganda. Para ano? So that these people who are trying to become rich in a wrong way, they can corner the contract and to make the electricity in the Philippines napakamahal. O hanggang ngayon, we are paying for the electricity na kahit hindi natin ginagamit na konsumo, binabayaran natin. You see? Hmm. So what shall we do with this? Example, si Senator Laila de Lima has been accused with a crime, drugs. We have to go to the court of heaven and find out if he's not guilty, dapat marilis siya. If not, if she is guilty of this crime, eh dapat mag-request tayo ngayon doon sa ano, criminal court sa langit. Oh, tinan niyo yung mga nasa Muntinlupa, nasintensya na yan. Pero hanggang ngayon, they're still doing their drug business inside the Muntinlupa. Oh, wala tayong ginagawa. Eh tayo ang hinihintay ng Diyos. I give you an example. One senator was accused with, ano, uh, plunder. Okay? Kasi pinadaan niya yung kanyang mga tinatawag na pork barrel kay, uh, ano, Napoles. Kay Napoles. Okay? Pinadaan niya roon. At ang ginawa ni Napoles, gumawa siya ng fake na foundations at mga fake na mga beneficiaries. Actually, yung testimony nga ng witness eh, ang ginagawa daw nila, kumukuha sila ng mga pangalan sa uh, telephone directory. Oh, can you imagine kung ganun katalino ang mga ito? At hindi ko maintindihan, ang sandigyan ba na ganun nagkaroon ng desisyon na ang guilty lamang ay yung abogado na chief of staff. Samantala yung perang ninakaw, nasa bangko nitong senador na ito. Bakit nakalusot? Tatlong judge yun. O. Oh. Yung isa nagdesisyon against doon sa senador. Pero yung dalawa kumampi. At nung hinihingi na ng korte ng sandigan bayan, yung pera sa, sa senador na ito, ayaw ibigay. I don't know what happened now. So those are what? Criminal work yun eh. Diba? Look at other nations like Japan or Korea. Pag naiskandalo, yung mga ganong klaseng mga na-involve sa ganong mga ganong klaseng iskandalo, what they do? 
nagaharakiri. Papakamatay sila because that is dishonor for their family. Sa name nila yon. Okay? Eh dito sa Pilipinas, bulok na yung bunga, ayaw pang malaglag. Nakakapit pa dun sa sanga. I'm not judging these people. But I'm only trying to see the real picture of these criminal activities in the Philippines. Na paulit-ulit lang. Napansin nyo? Like for example, NPA, namamatay lang yung commander, pero may nag-re-raise up na naman, may papalit na naman. Hmm. And the same thing din, ang ginagawa nila. Yung uh, revolutionary tax. Yung mga, yung mga, uh, contractor na naghahanap buhay lamang. Sinusunog yung mga equipments pag di sila nagbigay ng ano, ng revolutionary tax. Hindi lang yon Pag nakakawa sila ng kontrata sa gobyerno, meron din siyang tax na kinukuha yung mga government official. Para lang sila marilisan ng ano, ng pera na samantalang hindi man kinakalang sila magbayad because it's due to them eh. Diba? Some people have given themselves entirely over to Satan. We have to see this. This is reality, mga kapatid. Some people have given themselves entirely over to Satan. That's why in the Old Testament, these people were sometimes referred to as sons of Belial's, SOBs. Sons of Belial's. Now, if these people who are in the government, who are in a private practice, in the business taking advantage of the poor. These are sons of billions. Ano ang gagawin natin? Tingnan nyo pag-election. Before, yung mga businessman walang pakialam sa politika. Pero ngayon, karamihan ng mga nasa politics, sa politics, ay mga businessman. Why? They want to preserve their wealth. Oh. At hindi lang yon Pagkatapos ng tatay, yung asawa, pagkatapos ng asawa, yung tatay naman, pabalik-balik, then yung anak, yung apo. Oh. They build their, ano, their empire. Their only aim was to promote wickedness in the earth and to work against those who would behave Righteously. Oh, tingnan nyo ngayon. COVID. Wala namang ginawa ang ano, ang Department of Health. Kung hindi magbilang kung sino may sakit, kung ilan ang namatay, ilan ang nakarecover. Wala nga silang ginawa na mag-research ng gamot para sa COVID-19. They're just only waiting from the World Health Organization. And lately, may nagpresenta si Dr. Pabuna ng Sambales, ino-offer niya yung kanyang invention na gamot, yung Pabunan Antiviral Injection. Ayaw nila. In fact, what the FDA did, nag-issue pa ng cease and desist order doon sa Pabunan Medical Clinic Pangalawa, nag-issue pa sila ng memorandum na bawal mag-import ng procaine. The procaine is one of the drugs na ginagamit ng pabunan antiviral injection. Tatlong gamot yun. So, can you imagine? Who are the criminals here? The big pharmaceutical companies in cohorts and connivance with the people in the government. Kawawa si Duterte. Siya ngayon na yan, oh. Uh, ano bang tawag doon? Being influenced by these people. Oh. Lately, last week lang, nag-release ang UK through Reuters. Reuters. Binalita nila na yung isang gamot ng pangalan ay Dexa ma dexa I, I forgot the term yung gamot na yon is one of the ingredients of the pabunan antiviral injection 
Bakit hindi nila binigyan ng pansin itong gamot na ito? You know what Dr. Pabunan did? He was invited by Indonesia. At doon, imamanufacture yung gamot sa Indonesia. See? Nakakalungkot. E eh kung dito sana, nauna tayo dito sa Pilipinas, ay eh di sana natapos na itong pandemic na ito. Di ba? At bumalik na tayo sa old normal. And why all this happening? It's because there are really SOBs. These are the sons of Bilyals. They are what? They are, they are there to promote wickedness. And many people are what? Influenced by this wickedness. Whether or not they are beyond redemption, we will leave that up to the just judge. Wala tayong pakialam doon. Bahala na doon si Lord. But the thing is, we need to make a submission. Who are these people being used by the devil to promote wickedness in this nation? We need to be bold. We need to state. Maring magkamali tayo. Pero the thing is, we have to do it. We have to present it in the criminal court. They can be indicted for criminal behavior and rest restrained for, from further actions. If one company is not behaving right, righteously, if one company is not obeying the laws of the land, he has to be restrained. I'll give you an example. Oh, ABS-CBN. Oh, pansinin niyo po yung kanilang ano. Oh, parang ano nga eh, uh, yung tinatawag na Pandora's Box. Oh, ang dami pala nilang mga, madami palang question about legality nung kanilang operations. Assuming na tama yung sinasabi ng mga congressman. Assuming na tama yung isinampan ni uh, Kalida. Solicitor General Kalida doon sa, sa Supreme Court. Assuming na tama na dapat yung media is 100% Filipino owned and Mr. Gabi Lopez is dual citizen. He has a dual citizenship. One Filipino, one America. So if the Supreme Court will decide that that is not allowed. So, you see, These are criminal behavior, mga kapatid. Why? You violate the Constitution. Oh, another example. Pag-ama, nagugutom na, nagmotor at papunta sa trabaho, sa construction. Hinuli ng polis because they violate the, the protocol na bawal ang ano. Mag-angkas. Oh, yeah, that's the law. Wala tayong magagawa. But the thing is, there is a senator who did the same thing. Hindi nga lang motor. Pinag-violate din niya yung protocol. There is a mayor who violated the protocol in, in Baguio City. So, is justice has been rendered fairly? They yeah. Di makikita mo yung dalawang pobre, ano yung nakakulong? O yung senador at saka yung mayor, okay lang. Ako niyang ibig sabihin, I'm stating this fact for us to see our responsibility to bring this kind of cases doon sa criminal court in heaven so that there will be justice. So walang justice may serve si Lord pag walang nag-file ng, ng, ano, ng restraining order. I-restrain yung taong yon na nagbibehave criminally. Oh. Akalang natin kasi yung criminal behavior is what? Uh, yung pumatay. Hindi ho. By getting, by corrupting the, the resources of the Filipinos, maraming namamatay. Oh. So lately ngayon, yung ombudsman nagutos ng investigasyon doon sa uh, Department of Health. Iimbestigahan sila ngayon. 
because there are complaints. Oh, the thing is, what are we doing? The entire cultures had been affected by the sons of Bilial. Sample media. Media has been controlled for so long by the, by the sons of Bilials. They are doing propaganda. At yung propaganda nila is against the purpose of God. Tinan niyo po yung death, death of Naboth. Di ba? Uh, kapitbahay ito ni, ano, ni Ahab. And Ahab defrauded this guy. Nagustuhan niya yung ano. Yung lupa. At sinasabi, bayaran ko na lang yung lupa na yan. At sabi ni, ano, ni uh, Nabot, hindi pwede kasi mana ko ito eh. So, anong ginawa ni Jezebel? Pinilit niyang kinuha. Inakusahan si Nabot. False accusation. Then, pinatay. Oh. Sa Bible. Matindi yung crime ng pag uh, land grabbing. Pangalawa, yung hindi pagbabaya ng tamang sweldo. Salary. Eh, ang daming kumpanyang gumagawa niyan. Tapos may pangatlo pa. Bloodshed. Oh. Anong ginawa ni Lord? He sent Prophet Elijah and released judgment over Ahab. Oh. What is the judgment? Death to Ahab because of what he did to Nabot. And I'm sure ang daming gumagawa niyan dito sa Pilipinas. Our responsibility as a house of prayer bring that into the criminal court. They work to destroy anything relating to God in a culture. Diba? Much of what we see at work in the earth today is the result of unhindered efforts of sons of Bilial. The reason is, unhindered yung mga gawa nila. Walang kumokontra. Oh. Tulad itong COVID-19 na ito. I think the president becomes parang na-hypnotize siya nitong mga taong nakapalibot sa kanya to believe that this sickness is ano, uh, detrimental, which is not. Hmm. It is unhindered by the ecclesia. Kaya medyo mabigat na trabaho ito mga kapatid. We have to go to criminal court and file petitions against these people or sons of Bilial, restrain them from doing uh, criminal activities. Mga kapatid, karamihan sa kanila nakabarong na. The church have not availing the courts of heaven in dealing with those who would ruthlessly work evil in the earth. Pinapahirapan tayo. Ours had been a que sera sera mindset. Whatever will be, will be. If we as the church do not govern properly by the power and the direction of the Holy Spirit, evil will triumph. Ano sabi ni Edward Burke ba yun? Sabi niya, um, I forget yung sinabi. For the evil, for, for evil to triumph is for the good men to do nothing. For evil to triumph, the sons of Bilial will triumph over the Philippines if we will not govern properly by the power and the direction. Talagang ang kasamaan ang magano rito, ang mag uh, pre prevail dito. As we have been so busy doing nothing, the powers and workers of darkness have conquered many of the mountains of culture. 
family. It's already counted. Business. Religion. Oh, di ba? Si religion. Ang dami mga false religion. Ano ginagawa natin? Bring it to the court of heaven para may stop na yung mga false religion na yan. Hmm. Government. Oh, media. Ano pa? Education. There been there. They have become the dominant voice. Nawala na yung boses ng kanyang eklesia. We as the church or eklesia have the charge to finish the work of Jesus gave us to do. And what is that work? To disciple nations. Baptizing them. It's Discipleship is not only about discipling an individual. We need to disciple nations. And nations what? Will be conquered. We will be able to conquer nations. The seven mountains of that nations will be controlled by God. Matthew 28, alam natin yan. So as the Ecclesia arises and begins to legislate in the earth, we will be able to successfully curtail their activities and the impact of them in the earth. For so long, corruption has been systemic na po. So anong ginagawa na lang natin? We just shrug our shoulder at sinasabi natin, wala na tayong magagawa. Mga kapatid, meron pa tayong magagawa. We will be doing more than simply obtaining restraining orders. Si beginning lang yung restraining orders ang hingiin natin. Darating ang panahon. We will also be issuing arrest warrant and use other means within the courts of heaven. We'll be asking the court, Lord, issue arrest warrant for this person for being used by the sons of Bilyals. Or he might be part of the sons of Bilyals. That they will be stopped. And dami mga businesses dito. Gano? They're corrupting our wealth. Almost 98% of wealth is controlled by what? 2% of uh, Filipino families. And the remaining 2% of wealth pinag-aagawa ng 98% families. And may promise the Lord na sabi niya, there will be what? A, uh, tawag dito, distribution of wealth. Hmm. It's now the time that we have to arise. Yung mga court na dinaanan natin, na pinag-usapan natin, medyo hindi gaanong madugo. Pero itong criminal court, talagang mahirap po ito. So, I'd like to encourage the Ecclesia in the Philippines today. We are called to rule the earth, to rule the Philippines. Tayo dapat ang uh, governing body tayo ang magde-decide because where the church go church goes nation goes kung saan papunto ang simbahan ganun din yung bansa so we have to apply this criminal court so if the lord impressed to you someone who are, who are part of this uh, criminal activities na nagpapahirap sa Pilipinas can come together and make a submission and ask for restraining order na hindi siya makapinsala. Kuha niyo po. Oh. We can ask restrain dahil hindi man yan kaya ng presidente. Oh. Media has been promoting fake news for so long. Kahit anong mura ng presidente, parang bingi lang yung mga nasa media. Oh. Tuloy pa rin yung kanilang paggagawa ng mga fake news. Oh. So, if the church will awaken, 
from their slumber and realize the responsibility what to go to the court go to the criminal court ask for restraining order for those people o sino ba yung mga uh, irereveal sa inyo lord ang mga ano involved sa drugs involved sa corruption oh In, involved sa gambling na nagpapahirap sa ating bansa. Oh. Sino yan? Oh. Kaya, I believe this is now our time. This is our season today. May magagawa tayo because we can come to the court of heaven and ask for a judicial relief. Lord, ang dami na pong Uh, ano, uh, paninira ang ginagawa ng mga NPA. You can go to the court. And Lord, we are asking for restraining order sa lahat ng activities sa ginagawa ng NPA. Yung kanilang pag uh, uh, kukolekta ng, ano, ng revolutionary taxes. Yung kanilang uh, pag uh, paninira ng mga properties. So you, we can ask for what? For restraining order. To the point we can ask for arrest warrant. Kasi pag nadala po natin yung sa korte sa langit at nag-issue ang langit ng arrest warrant, I guarantee you, the court of here on earth will follow. Kasi alam niyo yung mga drug lords, mahirap mahuli yan. Kasi hindi man yan umahawak ng droga. Eh ang batas natin, pwede kang kasuhan kapag hawak mo yung droga. Oh. Hindi naman niya naghahawak ng droga. Oh, yung mga small time lang yung mga nahuhuli kasi sila yung mga nagbibenta. Sa mga kapatid, I leave to you this message. The court, the ecclesiastical court of heaven is one, is the court of ecclesia, second, the court of Uh, matrimony. And then, this one is another court in heaven that we can go through to receive relief from the criminality that's been happening in this nation. May magagawa po tayo. Maraming salamat po at God bless you.